effective counterinsurgencies <clears throat> are never quick. Like, I know it, it's amazing that we've been here for 10 years and we're still at the point we are now. I think it may be another 10 years until we actually see the, the true benefits come from this. And whether or not we're able to stick that out as a country is you know, beyond the scope of what I can see now, but I think it may be something that we have to do. My name is Marion Anthony and I'm a U.S. Marine. I've been out of the Marine Corps for the last 10 years. In 2011, I decided to return to Afghanistan to find my old unit and see firsthand what progress we had made. Instead of carrying a machine gun, this time I was carrying a camera. I decided to blog about my journey, and I call it Holiday in Afghanistan. I'm from Dalton, Massachusetts. I'm a Charlie Company's artillery forward observer. I came over from 211 at the beginning of their workup to go to Afghanistan. Uh, I do the indirect fires piece with artillery and mortars. Um, I can do close air support, but uh, my biggest job is the I.O. campaign here in Sagan. I was in high school. I think uh, I was a freshman in high school. I was in tech class, like shop work kind of stuff. Walking down the hallway really quick to go to the bathroom, saw one of my buddies running down the hallway. He was just saying, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And I didn't know what was going on. So by the time I got back into the room, they had the TV turned on and it was the news and, and the towers were burned and they hadn't collapsed yet. But everything just kind of stopped in the classroom. Everyone just watched the TV and that was kind of it. Everything kind of stopped. We were just focusing in on that. We knew it was something significant, but I think at the time we were all kind of in disbelief because you never picture something like that happen in the United States. And like once they started collapsing and once all everything started sinking in and we found out that hey, they were airplanes that hit the towers, I think it just all started to come full circle. Like if there was any moment where it got solidified, like this is definitely what I'm going to do, it was definitely that. And there was still disbelief, but I mean, you were still thinking, hey, you know, maybe we should pay attention to this, there's something pretty serious going on. It's the same for everyone. You put Sangin in Google and it's, it's one of the worst areas of Afghanistan. I mean, if you, you can't avoid what 3-5 faced here, you can't avoid what the Brits faced here. I mean, it's out there for everybody to see, so I think, I mean, if you if you want to find a crappy area of Afghanistan where the Taliban are really, where they're really focusing their efforts to, to damage what we're trying to do, it's definitely saying it. Worst day was probably when, uh, when hoteling stepped on the IED, because I think up to that point, we had always talked of, you know, hey, there are IEDs out there, there's always a threat, but, you know, we had been pretty fortunate where we were finding all of them. And just to have one of our guys actually step on one and get wounded, you know, that really put it into perspective that, hey, we're not invincible. Like, we can't, we may not be able to find all these. We have to have a plan to deal with them when something goes south. They do. Um, they can do really good. It just all depends on, we got to be willing to, to work with them. I mean, if you, they're the type of guys where they, they have a lot of motivation, but they need to see that they're respected by us and that we're willing to work with them and that uh, you know we're willing to do anything we could for them and, uh, and we're not just out there to kind of push them around because in the end you know it, it is their fight and, and we're here to help them so you know when the, when the working relationship is good and when we we work a lot with them they can do some awesome stuff people are starting to understand that the marines aren't just here to kill the taliban we're not just here to to blow stuff up, we're, that everything is with a purpose, and every time we blow up an IED that we find, it's making their lives a little safer. And I think that, that they're really starting to see that now. There's a lot of, I guess you'd say, passive support, where they they don't support the Taliban, but they're too afraid to kind of stand up to them openly. Um, I think that, yeah, a lot of the farmers here do get taken advantage, advantage of by the Taliban, whether it's taxing their their opium production, taxing the crops that they produce, and they, all that money goes to benefit the Taliban, but I don't think a lot of these guys, if they had a choice, I don't think they would want to do that. I just think that, you know, over the past couple years, they've just fallen into this rut of, hey, you know, it's harvest season. I know the Taliban's going to be around soon. Yeah, the Marines are here to help, but in the end, they may not be able to stop this guy from coming and taxing the crops. So I think that that's kind of... It's something we're trying to change, but as of now, I, I think it's just a difficult, a difficult thing. It's always going to be there, and we just have to do the best thing, best stuff we can to mitigate it. I think that there'll always be somewhere that they can go to, 
to get money from Poppy, but I think as far as the Taliban, I mean, I think this is their focus of effort, and I think if we can defeat them here, then, you know, they may be, there's not going to be many, many important areas left that they can go to hide and that they can go to operate out of. It's just, it's so hard to reach out to people who, who aren't educated because the language barrier is there, and, and a lot of times spoken word is the biggest way you can communicate something to these people because a lot of them can't read, they can't write, um, and it just limits us a lot about who we can reach uh, based on those factors. So I would say definitely education. I think government is a huge thing. Uh, the district government here and in Jaro, they've got so many good ideas and so many good programs that they want to try and reach out to the people with, but the security situation really limits where they can where they can affect right now. Our government's a big one. And uh, then just their, their economy, like that, that just has to get built up false economy that we're kind of injecting into the area through all of the money that we bring it's they really need something that can help them in the long run once we leave and, and the worst thing would be for us to pull out and for this area to just lose all the progress that it's made since we've been here from the money that we've put in that's, that's I think the big thing that we got to avoid I think just to have more guys here more ANSF more Marines but there's nothing that's quicker than having a Marine there that can get his eyes on something and that who can observe something because the, the reaction time and, and the reporting that comes up from a Marine on the ground is always quicker. So, I mean, if we had more Marines here, more ANSF, I think that we'd be able to cover a lot more of the area effectively. But there wouldn't be that fear of, hey, when the Marines leave, the Taliban comes, because you know, maybe we could we could make it so that there's always somebody there who can look out for these people. Where were you when you heard the news of bin Laden's death, your reaction, family's reaction back home? I was here. Uh, I think I, I had woken up. I walked into the COC. And, Hey, he's dead, and uh, the reaction at home was a lot more because you know they're viewing the the Afghanistan conflict from an outside perspective. So it was a huge victory for them, but for us, you know, it was business as usual. We get a couple reports saying that you know the Taliban are upset that he's dead, but our operations haven't changed. The Taliban's operations haven't changed. It's uh, I really don't think that he was a huge player in the events that are going on here. And even with his death, it's not going to change very much about what we're doing. We're still pushing forward for the same objectives. I think that we do have an obligation, and I don't think it's fair to to make an argument against what we're trying to do abroad based on the conditions that are that are back in the country. Because I, I always think that there's we have so many resources, and we're such a powerful country that you know I, I don't think that we need to sacrifice the good that we're trying to do overseas based on what a few guys are, are messing up with back at back stateside so I really do think that we have an obligation to help the people of Afghanistan and, and uh, help make this place a, a better place because if we don't do that then it's always just going to be an area that is just going to continue to fester and it's never going to be good I mean we saw what could happen before if, it, if, uh, if we let it run rampant and, and I don't see a reason why if we if we leave it won't just go back to how it was before and you know down the road five ten years you know, like the time that a lot of Americans don't ever think about, and they, they're not willing to look that far down the road, I don't see why we wouldn't see ourselves faced with another similar situation if we were to just pick up and leave from here. I mean, it, it's well, problems with the economy, problems in Wall Street, you know, that can be fixed. Corruption, that can be fixed. It's tangible stuff. I mean, money, uh, individuals doing things that are bad. You, you can always fix that, but I think that an idea that's so anti-everything we stand for is something that I mean, you're never going to just be able to fix like that. And I think if you just ignore it and you, and you don't get involved in it, it's just going to continue to be there. Hopefully, I know this is going to sound bad, but hopefully, you know, 10, 15 years from now, if we really want to make this work, hopefully we still have some presence, no matter how small it is in Afghanistan. Because I don't think, I think with the, the depth that this conflict has in society here and the, and the roots that it has, I think somebody's from a from either America or, or, or Britain or, or somebody's going to have to be here a while down the road because even it's going to seem like we almost have it and then it's we're not going to have it. I think we got to have a constant presence here to see this thing to the end and, and effective counterinsurgencies <clears throat> are never quick. Like, I know it, it's amazing that we've been here for 10 years and we're still at the point we are now. I think it may be another 10 years until we actually see the, the true benefits come from this. And whether or not we're able to stick that out as a country is, you know, beyond the scope of what I can see now. But I think it may be something that we have to do. I remember that's 
Awesome, that's all I have. Yeah. That's, unless you got anything you want to add? Time keeps going by. Yeah. We're still working on and making this place better. Afghanistan, the world, 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 the